So I am David Cantrell, and we have Tim Flink uh, here, who I'm going to ask to come up in, in a minute if he wants to. Uh, we, we actually have two uh, talks that are related to each other. Um, one is today, the other one's tomorrow in the morning, I think uh, 10.30, maybe? Yeah. So what we've been working on is the integration of a tool called RPM Inspect into the Fedora CI pipeline. So the talk tomorrow is going to uh, be a bit more about uh, Fedora CI and uh, what, what we're trying to do there. Um, I was going to give a, a brief introduction here and then ask Tim to add anything to it if he wants to. Um, so yeah, Fedora CI, RPM Inspect, and then how you can help if you're interested in helping. There's plenty of work to do. Okay, so Fedora CI. Uh, please go to the talk tomorrow if you're interested in that. A framework for auto, automating tests and providing results. That's really generic, but if you went to uh, the uh, Packager Workflow talk or earlier by uh, Neil, um, we kind of talked about the experience that a Packager goes through and wanting to know if builds failed and stuff like that. So this is all tied into getting to a point where builds that we do of packages can be trusted to put into an OS Compose. Um, so we don't have Rawhide and other releases in an unknown state. So doing as many tests as we can before. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of different aspects to what constitutes a test. Every package is a little different. You know, when you test a Python module, that's going to be different than testing, say, the bootloader. Um, so how do we get there? Well, we have this Fedora CI infrastructure that's going to provide these runners and triggers and things like that. RPM Inspect is just one example that I'm going to go into here. So knowing that builds are tested and working, gating a build before we get there. Now, I know we have this enabled for Rawhide. Uh, we have it, uh, I think, keyed through Bodhi. Um, one thing that I would like to do is some of these tests move them to before that. Uh, which we kind of have running right now for RPM Inspect. We have a few more uh, things to tie together there. Uh, because I think a lot of these things need to happen before we even get to that point. Not and for Rawhide. Not for Rawhide? Well, I mean, it well, uh, yeah. gets into a whole longer, you know, how gating is done in Rawhide. True, yeah. Uh, would, uh, you want to add anything else to Fedora CI stuff right now? No. no? Run okay, all right. So here's the docs link. Um, oh, and by the way, my slides are, I, I, I write them also to be like notes and reference for people later. Um, so that's why there's like a URL here. Um, so that's, that's Fedora CI uh, broadly. Now RPM inspect, build deviation analysis tool. Okay, that's kind of a mouthful. Let's talk about a little bit of history first. So Red Hat developed an internal QE tool called RPM Diff, not the RPM Diff that you've seen as part of RPM Lint. We like to reuse names. Um, so RPM Diff began life in the internal one, let's say 2003, 2004, it doesn't really matter, a long time ago. Before Vert, before containers, before the cloud, we had no clouds at all. Um, and it runs as a service and performs tests on uh, builds that we do internally. Um, the service aspect here is key. There's no way for a uh, package maintainer to really interact with RPM diff uh, at all. Like it's, it's automatically scheduled, the results are then posted and you have to um, fix it, sometimes often not really knowing what it's testing. Um, so what kind of tests does it do? Package policy compliance, so making sure you've named something correctly. Um, making sure you have a, uh, an approved license on the package, all of that metadata in there. Um, we have, uh, yeah, the legal checks, kernel ABI verification is a big one for the internal tool, enforcing security policies. Do you have any set UID root executables in the package payload, and are they allowed? So there's these data files that RPM diff will query to see if, um, you know, you, you have an allowed one. So there's about 40 test that RPM diff does, and they're all of uh, varying complexity. Um, this last thing here as well, comparisons from one build to the next, that's where the diff aspect comes in. So for rel packages, this is really important um, for uh, 
for compatibility reasons. We want to avoid any surprise regression. So files disappearing, new files appearing in a subsequent build, a new package appearing or going away. Uh, sometimes um, executables would grow uh, substantially, like uh, you know, you go from one megabyte to 300 megabytes, something went wrong with linking. Uh, so it'll catch things like that and report it. Okay, so how does it do this? Um, internally, uh, we use the errata tool. Developer, okay, so at this point, the package maintainer has completed all of their work. They've checked in all of their fixes to disk git. They've built it in Koji. And now they log into this web-based tool to do the paperwork. So this is basically like the internal version of, of Koji if you haven't used it. All right, so the errata tool schedules an RPM diff job. What? You said Koji, you meant Bodhi. Oh, yep, yeah, I meant Bodhi, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Too many names to keep track of. Okay, so the errata tool schedules an RPM diff job. That talks to the RPM diff hub, which is a Python uh, server running actually on a physical server. It verifies that the build exists. It does this by talking to Koji. If the build exists, it hands it off to a worker. A worker is another physical server. There's a pool of them. And this is running a Python service as well. The worker performs the RPM diff operation. It copies the builds from an, an, uh, an NFS share. Um, there's no way around that. It then runs a Perl script to unpack the RPMs. Then it runs a Python script to actually run the checker program. The checker program is written in C, and it iterates over all of those 40 tests I was talking about. And each one of those spawns multiple Perl and Python scripts, and it collects the results and puts it together in a XML format and hands it back up to the hub. It's not a great architecture, but again, given the age and given the time period it was written, it's kind of understandable. Um, it's the uh, service side of it, the hub and the worker, are too closely tied to the part that performs the tests. So, runs on physical hardware. That would be a little easy to create. The biggest problem is the requirement of the NFS share, which is kind of hard to unravel right now. Uh, it's a legacy code base, a lot of technical debt. I am not a Perl expert uh, at all, so it's really hard to kind of go through that. Um, there's too many moving parts. You can't run it from the command line, so a developer can't use this tool at all. And it only gives you XML, because at the time it was written, that was, you know, what everyone wanted, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, call graph, I love this. So the, uh, when I was talking about how, how this runs, the uh, C program, the RPM diff checker program, uh, this is what the call graph looks like. Um, if you're familiar at all with this, so this is uh, the entry points, all the function entry points in the C program. Um, the second row there uh, is basically corresponds with um, one or more of those tests I was talking about, and each one of those boxes is going to be spawning multiple um, external scripts, Perl, Python, sometimes shell. So this is just running it uh, on two uh, Z shell builds, and I captured this. Um, I thought it was interesting. Um, okay, so back to RPM inspect. So going through all of that code, I thought this is going to be very difficult to make it usable in the Fedora space. So what are the actual goals here? So ensure package reliability. Developer is aware of the build changes. We want developers to be able to modify packages and stay in packaging compliance. But we also want to provide data in a CI environment to make decisions. So I wrote this down. Got to be able to run it locally. Got to be able to run it in container. Need basically do all the things that, that RPM diff can't do directly right now that it relies on external tools to do. So the service side, that hub and worker aspect, that's the part that's being broken out and becoming part of Fedora CI. And Tim has written that now. It runs in Fedora. Um, and we just need to connect where the results go, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, service listens for new builds and launches RPM inspect runs. 
RPM inspect does those tests. And then this hasn't been done yet, but uh, it'll be the next step. We get those into results DB and then we can tie it into the rest of the chain there. So policy checks and then differences. So one thing that RPM diff uh, could not do is just run against one build which I thought would be really useful for developers. Let's say we have a packaging policy change in Fedora and you can just, you can check your latest build and say, well, does it comply against what the policy is? And it does require RPM inspect knowing what that is, but we have one point to change and then a tool that can run for developers. And then we also have the ability to do um, the differences between two builds. So it does look at sub packages right now. Um, I haven't actually added that. That's a good idea, actually. Um, if if a file by the same name, uh, same location, some some kind of uh, qualifier, and it could be a little more intelligent right now. All it does at the moment is what RPM diff did, which was just identify. Uh, so when it when it's doing two builds. Um, it'll have the before build and the after build, and then it goes through all the sub packages and it figures out the peers and then all of the files in those. So anything that's in a before build and has no peer in the after build, and like what? So that, that's, that's where that starts. But yeah, it would make sense to uh, catch it if it moves, because that is quite common. Yeah. Um, it more than it should. <laughs> yeah, certainly in Fedora. So yeah, um, yeah, that seems totally doable, at least in some capacity. Yeah. Policy checks, so these are things that I do right now. Again, these ideas came from RPM diff, so I check the license tag, validate that against the approved license database, uh, check header metadata. Um, political concerns is, uh, is an interesting one, so uh, this is, this is from RHEL, um, Red Hat being a, a U.S. company has to be conscious of, of uh, certain, I don't know, embargoes or, or political concerns or market concerns. So there is a, uh, the political check in there is uh, a whitelist for allowed files that would otherwise trigger um, a warning. Um, so an example might be, uh, the flag of Taiwan being included in the release and we ship it to China. Um, China doesn't like the flag of Taiwan for various <laughs> reasons. So um, th this is a thing that Red Hat has to be concerned about. So it, you know, it might not necessarily apply verbatim to Fedora, but there could be other things. Um, one of the things I have done in RPM Inspect is set it up so that we can easily enable and disable tests per packages. So with RPM diff, I didn't mention, but all those 40 tests, everything runs for every build. Um, you don't get a choice. It's all or nothing. So this, you can just run one test or you can disable one or two. So we have that. Uh, forbidden language, again, this one is uh, maybe not as strict in Fedora. Uh, Red Hat has, um, you know, looks for uh, English um, uh, swear words and some other things. Uh, use of macros, so we can enforce that, and it's pretty easy. Uh, Java bytecode major version check. I was just working with the uh, Java developers. Um, I forget what things they, well, I know they do the OpenJDK packaging, but some other stuff too. And I was asking them the, the origin of this test, and for RHEL, we ensure that we don't ship any class files that have a Java major version in the class file header that does not match the version of OpenJDK that we ship. And I was thinking, okay, well, that, that's pretty good. So I added that in there. Um, I, also, I also found out that Java class files have the same first, uh, same first bytes as a Mac OS X executable, um, which, yeah, it's, uh, in hex it spells cafe babe. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Um, Elf object checks, so there's a lot here, especially tied to security enforcement uh, policies around that. Uh, and then the set UID, set GID, things like that. Um, so this is, this is what's 
present now. Um, I have a long list of things that, that uh, I want to add, most of them ideas from uh, RPM diff. Yes? Uh, <laughs> so I've, I've built this um, as a program in a library and the intent is we can just add, we can keep adding tests in it. Um, some people cringe when I mention this, but it is written in C. The primary reason for that is most libraries that I need to talk with to do the work are written in C. Um, I am happy to help you. There is a template. Um, inspect function, and uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, you, basically, if you want to implement, uh, if you want to implement a test, it's really just uh, one new source file and modifying a header, and then it's there. Um, so yeah. All right, so build types, uh, regular Koji RPM builds, uh, and also RPM inspect supports module builds. Um, RPM diff does not. Uh, and this is built to extend to other things that Koji might output in the future. I know it does more than RPM builds, but let's say at next year's flock we all decide to start using Debian packages, you know, we could modify it for that um, very easily. It'd be trivial. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, support files. So one problem that RPM diff had was it hard-coded basically all of the knowledge it was checking for. Uh, it was in a mix of header files, um, string constants, just it, it was all over the place. So I started splitting that out into a separate data package um, and a configuration file to provide even more fine-grained control. So RPM inspect.conf uh, and then the product specific data is in the RPM inspect data package. Now the program itself provides a package called RPM inspect data generic. That is a template package and then I have a separate one called RPM inspect data Fedora. That's the one that you want to install if you run this on your system. Um, it's kind of the same idea as uh, Fedora release, Red Hat release, generic release, that kind of thing. Um, because there is a separate internal package called RPM inspect data Red Hat and it is completely and totally different, let me assure you. Um, okay, so how do we run this? Uh, first you want to install it. Uh, I actually forgot on that first line to install RPM inspect. Uh, so you get that in the data package. There is a man page, there's help options, um, but the basic syntax is here. Previous build, new build is optional, you could just specify one build. And then here's an example. So verbose output minus K is uh, keep all of the temporary files. Um, minus capital T, license, uh, I'm only going to perform the license test on this RPM inspect run. Um, if you run RPM inspect minus L, it'll list all the available tests. Uh, so you could do multiple ones there separated by a comma. All right, what can I do today? I've kind of been through some of this here. Um, by default, it'll output to uh, the console just in like mostly human readable format. It can also do a JSON output, which we're using to integrate into uh, the CI pipelines. Um, and I also added a fetch only mode if you want to use it to just download a build by NVR. Um, just because I was doing that and it was handy. So yeah, it, it does a lot right now. Um, just kind of kind of ran through uh, mostly all of these. Oh yeah, validate uh, desktop files, um, make sure you have the disk tag. Um, now, the way this is set up is as packaging policy evolves, as our build process evolves, the knowledge that RPM inspect has will have to change. So that's why a lot of this lives in that data package, so we don't have to go and change code for these things, but there may be new tests that we need to add as time goes on. Um, and there may be tests that we can remove that, you know, are no longer valid. Um, so one thing I wanted to do was show, uh, so right now this is, uh, so I've got a, a copper repository 
in Fedora. So every time code is checked into the upstream repo, it'll build automatically. We're doing CentOS 7 and then the most recent uh, Fedoras. The package does exist in Rawhide. I have not uh, done it officially for previous releases. If someone wants to volunteer for that, I'm happy to uh, accept that offer. Um, the best way right now to use it uh, in the command line is just to enable the copper repo. Um, and then if you're familiar with uh, our build system, so this would be, uh, this is Z shell, um, just listing all the recent builds. So I go here when I'm testing it and I, I find two previous builds. Uh, so let's, um, alt -tab. yeah. All right, so. I've already installed it because I did not want network connectivity to fail and all that kind of stuff, but we'll just run through a couple of things here. So your normal output screen here, um, it'll, it'll show you, uh, I, well, I try to show defaults here um, and then how to override it. Uh, let's see, um, yeah, the dash, uh, dash dash list to list tests, uh, format type, um, the test list, those are probably the most important. Oh yeah, and for the, let's see, product release string. So product release string is something unique to RPM diff and I didn't want to carry it over to RPM inspect. So internally when an RPM diff job is run, it has to be told what release of rel to run for. So is it gonna run for rel eight or rel seven? And I thought to myself, you know, I can probably infer that from the disk tag. So what it does right now is it, it grabs the disk tag from your before and after build, and if they match, that's the release it's going to use. If they don't match, it'll stop and tell you to tell me what release to use. And we're just gonna go with disk tag because that's established um, and is, is well documented. Um, so you could take like uh, Fedora uh, 31 builds and say do it against Fedora 30. Question? But it's, it stops and tells you why. Um, so yeah. Uh, uh, no, it's not, yeah, it's not interactive. It's gonna exit. Um, yeah, so uh, if I uh, run it at the command line here, let's see if I, I wanna do the license and metadata tests um, for, oops. I've already cached some builds, because again, I don't trust the network. Um, I'll do license, metadata, and then, yeah, uh, Koji builds, my before, and my after build. Now if you, I'm, I'm doing, I'm telling it the exact path to the build, um, only because I wanna save time here. Um, but you can just specify the NVR. So, you know, your, your specification can look like this and what RPM inspect will do is ask Koji, it'll say, is that a build? And if it is, tell me where to get it and it'll download it. Um, so you don't, you don't have to do that separately. It just um, knows and the RPM inspect.conf file tells it where to get that info. <sighs> Okay, so this will perform two tests. This is gonna output in what I call the human readable format, but, uh, ah! <laughs> so that was where it stopped. I don't know if everyone saw, but I have the trailing slash there. I could probably fix that. <laughs> I've actually got a long list of things I'm gonna fix tonight, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so you see it grabbed FC31, they don't match and it doesn't know what to do. Um, uh, it does have a verbose mode. All right, so here we go. Um, oh, by the way, RPM diff for those uh, unfamiliar with it, we would start this job and then walk out there and get a cup of coffee, talk about how the conference is going, then we come back and it might be done. Or it might say it's that's, that's right, yeah. So, so we've got a, a big speed improvement here. Um, so 
this is the test name, so license test, and then it's just reporting text here. A lot of this I have lifted from the output from RPM diff. Please don't take this as being authoritative. I am welcome to input of what this, this stuff should say. Question? Hey, the RPM diff, so the real one, uh, mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, if you run this in Fedora, mm -hmm. in which package you intend to run it? Because we can have like multiple releases during uh, one Fedora release. Correct. So is it is it good idea to run it against the version in GE uh, or the latest version? So even. Oh. Speaking for copper, uh, yeah. we may run it in copper, so mm -hmm. should we run it against the latest build? Uh... These are all really good points, and I think Fedora needs a little more flexibility than what RHEL does. So I would say, and this is a conversation that Tim and I need to have to make some decisions on, um, Fedora QA needs to have some input as well. My personal thought is that for Rawhide, uh, the comparison is most useful to the last build that passed um, and for a released version it would be the last one that we shipped as an update just as a starting point point. and just as a reference uh, what, one of the things that we're running that does something similar right now is um, ABI check and yeah. we look at the last um, or the most recent build so we just go into Koji what's the last build that was pushed as an update and do that comparison um, under the thought that for most Fedora use cases I um, I'm I'm in the Fedora CI uh, SIG and um, want to have the conversation in that sort of context. So, uh, if you want to be part of it, I uh, encourage you to to watch there and yeah, um, because again, this is I want input from package maintainers. I want this to be a useful package maintainer tool. I don't want this to be something that you don't get a say in because no one no one likes tools like that. No. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. No, I, I thought about that. The main reason is um, I've got the, the peer detection and I have to iterate in a certain way. But I have written it such that this can run like as many times as you want on the same system. Um, RPM diff was very strict in that exactly one could run at a time. Um, it just, it, yeah. Uh, so I've made sure that that can happen, it can run in a container, it can run inside mock if you don't want to do a container. I mean, I've tried to make it pretty flexible in that respect. So this is the output of the license stuff, and then uh, down here, header metadata. So there are some errors here. Now, this package build host, this is, again, a test I lifted from RPM diff. It checks to make sure that the package build host that gets recorded in the RPM header uh, internally ends with .redhat.com. So when I created the RPM inspect data package, I said, oh, well, it makes sense that we probably want to build things on .fedoraproject.org hosts. Well, you can see this package was built somewhere else. I don't know hogwarts.boss.redhat.com, but this was not built in Koji. <laughs> or maybe it was, I don't know. So, but this also, I have here suggested remedy, and this is another area that I would love uh, comments on from, from people for uh, specific tests. It tells you, you know, wh what can you do to fix this? RPM diff doesn't do that. Um, let's see. All right. The entirely possible, yeah. Um, so that's that's one that, that may need a little investigation. Um, so I wanted to do uh, a different format here real quick. So that's the default output if you're using it 
as a developer, and this is what it would be for that we're using to integrate into the CI pipeline. I'm not doing XML because I don't see a need, but it's set up such that we can drop in additional output formats if we need them. Um, so there we go. Uh, uh -huh. All right. Uh, Okay, oh yeah, so the call graph. So I explained RPM inspect. Um, you, you saw the one for RPM diff. This is what I have right now for RPM inspect. Um, and keep in mind that the RPM diff one doesn't download packages, does not directly talk to Koji, and can't even unpack an RPM. Um, RPM inspect does all that, and I try to make code reuse a, a thing. Uh, if you can't remember what the the other one looks like, there it is, and then here's the new one. Um, so, again, trying to make it a little more maintainable and usable, and not have a single choke point for the whole program. So, contribution. So, I have uh, a unit test suite has been started. That's kind of the first step. An integration test suite is in the works. So, this is this is one of the huge advantages of RPM diff right now. Is Despite being a legacy code base, largely in maintenance mode for over a decade, it has a very extensive integration test suite. All of the people that worked on maintenance for it uh, were very, very disciplined in adding in um, integration tests anytime there was a bug. So I want to make sure that we have that for RPM inspect just to make sure it's reliable. Documenting the details of individual inspections. So what does the license, te license test do? Where does it get that data? How can I change that data? Who owns the data it's testing against? That kind of stuff. Designing new tests based on the Fedora packaging policy or other things. So for instance, the Python test you know, that you were mentioning would be good. And then help maintaining the, uh, the data package. So this is gonna be a moving target just because Fedora evolves. Um, and I'm not going to know everything about the distribution, so send pull requests. Um, and also bug fixes in code and, and just general feedback. Uh, this is ready to use right now. If you maintain packages, um, I'm interested in hearing feedback, like, you know, what does it look like, uh, what fails? You know, it's not perfect right now, but uh, the more people using it, using it will help uh, get it to a really good point. I have a goal of, of implementing the RPM diff tests that make sense, as well as coming up with a process to um, take the Fedora packaging policy and get that into a test that is easy to maintain through the data package. So as the packaging policy evolves, we can update the data package and RPM inspect will just pick up all those changes so we can keep things in compliance. Code lives here right now. I do have, um, there's an organization project called RPM inspect that I'm gonna move everything to. I haven't done that yet. Uh, I mentioned packages are in rawhide, automated builds are in copper. And then we've got Fedora CI on Freenode, Pound OS CI internally, I'm D Cantrell. GitHub issues is where to tell me about problems and question. Uh, so would it make sense for RPM inspect to replace the Fedora So actually I made a bunch of notes about that earlier and I do think it would be really useful. Like it can already do a lot of what Fedora Review is doing now and the idea of encapsulating the packaging policy in a data file format I, like, I think it would be pretty easy, and it could potentially replace that Fedora review um, functionality. Um, yeah. Question. I've seen a lot of papers in the output. What is the problem? So that was a, that's a thing from RPM diff. I didn't really explain that. So uh, when RPM diff runs internally for a rel build, um, you're going to get a pass or a fail or something called needs inspection. If it's on needs inspection or fail, you go in and you look at the output of the individual tests. And as the package maintainer, you can waive that result and explain why the test um, failed. Uh, or if it's legitimate, you have to go and fix it and submit it again. 
Um, I don't know if that's really going to be useful data for, um, for Fedora, but I, it's in there right now and it's in the results. It would be very easy to remove or just uh, alter uh, as we see fit for gaining, but that's what that's from. Uh, the waiver authorization uh, internally, RPM diff has subcategories of tests that the results can only be waived by, say, the security team or another team. The default is anyone can waive the result, so that's why that was in there. Okay. Yep. A follow-up question: How can I use this as a CI and in Fedora? So. Oh, that's a good question. So what we were going to talk about um, at the end of the week in the packet workshop is incorporating this into the packet workflow. So say you have the spec file upstream, you get a pull request for a project, a build is kicked off, we run RPM inspect, the results go to results DB, and then that's visible through the packet uh, output in some capacity. No, not yet. And I wanted it, it is running right now, the results just aren't consumable yet. Um, but the idea is to have that uh, completely tied in so the results are visible somewhere. Um, so yeah, uh, and, and with that, we'll be able to make gating decisions. So if there's a lot of failures or any failures, we can say this, this package cannot proceed to the next step. Uh, this build can't proceed, and here's why. Uh, so that, yeah, that's the idea. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so, speaking of replacing Fedora review, uh, so one reason it runs so slow is that it actually does the build in mock. Right. right. It, it does not, RPM inspect does not perform any build. So it just looks at the output of what an RPM build minus BA would be. Um, so when I was writing down, I was, I was thinking, yeah, I could do the review. And I went and looked at the code briefly and saw that it does that. And I thought, oh, well, maybe that's out of scope for RPM inspect. But uh, yeah, there, there's some overlap there with policy compliance. Question? Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I really don't want RPM inspect to start doing builds and stuff like that, but if, yeah, if Fedora Review can make use of the, the policy checks, you know, that I think that would be a win. Um, so, yeah, maybe I'll, and, and I, you had another question and I went around, so. You, so if I can run this locally, maybe I can run it on Fedora CI by installing the tool on the Jenkins job and running it you, you can certainly do that, yes. Um, eventually it'll be automated when you submit uh, a Koji build. Um, but yeah, you can do that now uh, if you want to. Yeah. And actually, I'm, I'm interested if you do that. So like, uh, message me or email me like how that goes because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious uh, what will happen there. If I get more internet, I can try it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes. Define average size. Okay, so I would. Yeah, so uh, the the kernel takes a while right now, um, and uh, I'm I'm considering like maybe I can restrict it like with uh, uh, with mock or with Koji. Uh, you can restrict it to a certain architecture, and that may be able to allow us to farm things out a little more in parallel. Um, 
right now there's there's a bug in one test where when you run it against the kernel package it's actually going to seg fault um i was fast. yeah yeah <laughs> right it's really fast yeah um uh so the the full suite of uh, like all the tests that are implemented in there right now which are like 10 or 11 um it's less than a minute um yeah Yeah, so I was talking about that integration test suite, um, and kernel, glibc, gcc are ones that I'm running on the side constantly to to see what the output is and and where we can do some performance improvements. Ooh, oh, I could do tech live. <laughs> That's a lot of sub packages. <laughs> yes. What, uh, what Fedora release is this available for? No. Oh, yeah, okay, so so if we're, let's say, we're do, Rawhide's doing builds for Fedora 31 right now, that's what the disk tag is. So that check is in place to ensure that by default you're comparing builds from the same like release development chain or collection. Um, that again comes from RPM diff design, but there's no restriction to do that. You like if you specify a uh, Fedora 30 build as the before one and a Fedora 31 as the after build, all you have to do is tell RPM inspect, use this as the release string, um, assume it's Fedora 31 or assume it's Fedora 30. And that's literally the only reason it exists in uh, RPM diff, um, but I think it's a nice default catch to an, um, prevent any accidental comparisons um, from builds that were done for a previous release. So, yeah. Any more uh, questions? Yes. Yes. So any observations you have, especially if, it, if it, something does not fit your workflow, if it doesn't fit your packages, then the earlier you speak up, the, the better. Yes. I, I actually have a question that's exactly on this line. Do you have any way to monitor how the tool is doing? Well, because I guess you're going to the end of it for it. You're going to for it, and it just doesn't have an effect on the end of the system. Yeah, I, we, don't, we don't have any of that uh, set up yet. That is pending. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I'm sorry I wasn't too clear on that, uh, but yes, implementing it as, as uh, a gating test, um, definitely the main objective here. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll be at the packet uh, workshop. Um, so if you want more information about RPM Inspect or any details, I'm happy to answer those. Um, I will be uh, working to, you know, help figure out how we're going to connect Packet with uh, RPM and Spec, so that'll be part of the discussion as well. Um, yes? And also, if you're interested in how these, these lib tests and others are set up and interfacing, then the Fedora CI SIG is a good place to be even if you don't contribute code, especially questions about how, how the policy is implemented, who should be asked. Yeah. Thank you. And I think I finished uh, early. Yes, you have five minutes. All right. Well, everyone gets an extra five minutes. <laughs> or they can keep asking questions. <laughs> okay, thank you.